Today, Drew Rosner and I have a great conversation with Soren von Farschman, the CEO of CloudFest and NamesCon. This is not an advertisement for NamesCon. This is a really interesting conversation because, you know, NamesCon really tries to evolve their content as the market is evolving. So we talk a lot about the changes that they're seeing in the market how, of course, NamesCon is meeting those with some specific actionable items for the conference. We also discussed the big game changer. GoDaddy is the back-end auction provider. And the big question is Wayne the Auctioneer staying on. Enjoy the show. First, serious about online trading? Secure your funds, keep your merchandise safe and use a company that keeps the buyer and seller protected the whole way through. That's escrow.com. Payments you can trust. FD was built by domain investors to increase your inquiries, sales, and profit. Forget spreadsheets and archived emails. Manage your entire investment portfolio in one place using a secure and completely confidential platform. Learn more at FT.com. That's E-F-T-Y. FT.com. Hey, Sherpa Network. I'm Tess Diaz, executive producer of DomainSherpa.com. And today we are delighted to have Soren von Marschen, of, um, CEO of CloudFest and NamesCon. Hi, Soren. How are you doing? Yes. Good afternoon. Hi, Tess. How are you doing today? Fabulous. So excited to hear what's different this year at NamesCon. And Drew Rosner, popular panelist at NamesCon, joining us per usual. How are you doing, Drew? Doing great, doing great. Little, little sick, but uh, working through it. The show must go on. Uh, thanks right. for being here. So, Soren, we've heard some rumors. The Domain Economic Forum is happening this year at NamesCon. Tell us what's new, what's different. Uh, let's start out with the venue itself. Uh, the entire city is new. Yeah, but that's a very good point. I mean, um, now six or seven years in, uh, with names caught in, in Las Vegas, we, we thought it's it's time for a physical change of the conference. Um, we, we were sick of the um, uh, carpet in the Tropicana. Uh, that was the main reason. But um, but for now, um, beside of, um, that idea that we do a physical change and have a, a new venue with Austin, Texas, which is an amazing town, uh, we choose it by purpose. It's one of the few cities where you can walk everywhere. Um, and, and just and not we, easy to fly I, to internationally, I've recently yeah. discovered. <laughs> so, great, great new town venue. Uh, I mean, South by Southwest proven that it's a great venue for conferences. Um, and um, with Domain Economic Forum, uh, we go one step further. It's not only a physical change, uh, it, it's also a change um, to the agenda, as you have seen in the previous years. And uh, the whole idea behind that Domain Economic Forum is we are asking a couple of questions ourselves and our audience. Like uh, one of them is what we can do today to make our niche market bigger. And the second big question is what are the real economics shaping the fortunes of domainers, registries, and registrars? And around that, we are building currently the agenda for NamesCon 2020, answering specifically these two questions which I mentioned so far. Uh, but let me turn that around, Drew. What, is, what do you understand under the Domain Economic Forum? We brainstormed a little bit since NamesCon Europe in, in Portugal, mm -hmm. hometown. We had a lot of conversations around that. Um, what's your opinion about that? So, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, first and foremost, uh, we just need a shift, uh, a shift in perspective, a shift in content, a shift in uh, uh, even in players. Um, I think, uh, you know, we, uh, so coming back to sort of NamesCon as a, as, as a conference, you know, clearly it, it's developed into the domain conference uh, of the year. Um, I, I love that there's, you know, some satellite conferences, uh, such as the, the one you did in Lisbon uh, with NamesCon Europe. Uh, I, I think that that gives us 
you know, as an industry, uh, you know, the ability to have a wider impact. There's a lot of people that can't travel to the U.S. because of visa issues or uh, money or time, et cetera. And I think, um, you know, giving people in Asia, giving people in Europe, giving people in South America, uh, maybe even someday in Africa, uh, I, I was blown away. I was just in South Africa and I was blown away by uh, the, the breadth of the startup community in, in South Africa, in Cape Town particularly. Um, but I think widening our scope should be one of the primary focuses of the domain industry. We need to grow the pie, as you said. Um, I think there's a number of ways to go about doing that. If we, if we, if we all agree that you know, growing the pie is really the big goal uh, because it benefits all of us. You know, it, 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 this isn't a, uh, a zero sum game. This is, uh, I believe at least, an industry still in its infancy that, that is a fraction of its overall addressable market. And um, anything we can do to, to get there faster is good. And so I think getting more, you know, getting domains, uh, educating more people and making domain names more visible to more people, uh, first and foremost. Uh, I think, you know, disrupting some of the narrative that we've been having, you know, I think time after time, and we've got some really smart people in the domain industry, uh, but I think a lot of the content that we've seen over the years is, is somewhat redundant. You know, it evolves as the market evolves. Uh, it shifts as, as, as preferences shift uh, in terms of, you know, the types of domains that are popular or, you know, just what's emerging in the market. Um, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, a new outside industry like, like, you know, crypto or the Chinese boom or, you know, the cannabis industry. You know, these are three ex, uh, exo factors uh, from with outside of the industry, which have really shaped the industry and shaped I think a lot of the content at, at Namescom uh, in past years, but I think uh, we have an opportunity to sh to to shift sort of uh, you know the endo narrative, the the the, the narrative within the can uh, the can the, the narrative within the domain name industry, and I think you know the topics there that will move the needle are consensus on how to value a domain name. I think first and foremost, I think that's like you know, technologically speaking, the single biggest roadblock that we as an industry face. How does a bank lend money to the startups that want to buy our domain names if they don't know how to value the domain? How do these companies get insurance products on their digital assets, which in some cases are the most valuable asset on their balance sheet? Uh, how do these companies, you know, uh, account for these domain names in, in creative ways? How do we create new, uh, structures to sell or lease or create joint ventures on these domain names in ways that benefit everybody. You know, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's get out of this closed minded approach to, you know, I'm the domain owner and you either pay me millions of dollars or you take a hike, right? Because they're going to take a hike. <laughs> uh, yeah. But what we really want is to make a deal. And to do that, we need to get creative because you know, I think that there is billions, if not tens of billions of dollars a year wasted in inefficiencies between the companies that are launching venture backed high growth startups that are launching and should be launching on the best version domain name for their company from day one or from day whatever uh, that they, they have a minimum viable product. Uh, versus you know going two three four five years before upgrading uh from a .co or a .io or some prefix or suffix domain to their raw you know unadulterated brand.com uh exact match brand.com uh which in most cases let's face it that is the you know that is the the the, the you know that's Fifth Avenue. That, that's, if you want to be a big brand, that's kind of where you got to go. I mean, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. I think it's 499 out of the top Fortune 500 companies. Dot com. They just, you want to be a billion dollar company, you better do it. And if you don't, you know, you're going to pay one way or the other. So um, how do we get these companies at an earlier stage onto our domains? 
And I think that that's a really important question uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, which we can talk about at NamesCon. But I think getting these topics at the center of the conversation is critical. You know, um, I think stories are great. You know, new GKLD registries pitching how they're doing it differently. That's great. And at the end of the day, you know, you need to address all of your constituents. And yeah. new GTLB operators are a big part of that constituent. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there are really important lessons to learn from one operator talking about, you know, I, I actually, one of the, I would say from the last names con, uh, the last names con in Vegas, uh, the single most important lesson I learned uh, out of the whole conference uh, was, um, uh, uh, from the Radix, uh, 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 uh Bobbin, uh, yes. Yeah. From, so when you had, you had, you did like a fireside chat with Bobbin and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was about the Radix registry and their numbers and, uh, you know, the very data driven approach to how they analyze which strings they wanted to apply for which strings to go after the most aggressively, the marketing strategy, you know, everything had to have a quantifiable data-driven uh, basis. And, uh, you know, again, results speak for themselves. They seem to be doing yeah. quite well. So yeah. um, actually by coincidence, I'm working today in Bavin's house here in London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I mean, that's a good point. I think that was, um, a very good starting point we had last year with this extremely data-driven approach and and the way how Redix actually shared the numbers with the attendees. Mm -hmm. We got amazing feedback from that. And this transparency that, is so crucial. It's so crucial, exactly. And I, I think there were a lot of like what I would call action, actionable items which the attendees mm -hmm. were, were able to take home from from that fireplace chat or, or keynote, which which. Uh, he was doing last year and and that is something which we put this year into this domain economic forum it's all about actionable items which the attendees will be able to take home after that and especially with what you mentioned already before this we call it transparency series yeah this is something we are building out in 2020 so we are going to have workshops um in a transparency series for how to run um, a domain investor, how to run a registry, and how to run a registrar. So we have, we have a couple of people who will help doing these, these workshops. So we have a backend providers, you know, who can, who can help mm -hmm. us to, to explain how to run a registry, you know, together mm -hmm. with uh, the guys from registry office, Dina's Globals, which is business intelligence, they deliver with their systems. Um, same, you know, like there's very smart people who can explain us how to run a registrar. I mean, there's different ways, you know, you have a wholesale guys, you have a guy yeah. selling directly, you know, there's then others who focus specifically on the main investors as a target group. So we are, we are going with a transparency series into that, like how to run a registrar. And then um, obviously, uh, because it's 70, 80% of our audience with domain investors, the same here, you know, like showing mm -hmm. like all tools, you know, which can be able to use and, and how to bring more transparency, you know, into, into this very niche segment. We always compare ourselves to the real estate industry, but actually we really can't because we are so intransparent as can be. And um, the question is a little bit also what I learned uh, at ICON in Montreal um, two weeks ago, like having a lot of interviews and talking to a lot of people is like, it's a little bit of a question like what what level of transparency do we really want to have you know and and that is something we we really would like to discuss extremely openly in in january this year and and find find actionable solutions as an industry for it yeah mm -hmm. and um yeah this transparency series is is one of the two major things we are concentrating on from a content perspective this is really a big um I feel like it's a big shift in the slow evolution for the domain industry. You know, 
Um, I think Drew mentioned the content evolves as the market evolves. And um, what big shifts are you seeing in the market in general that are driving this? Is it just that you're seeing you know, new, smarter investors coming in? Um, are, um, and maybe I should have backed up and asked you too, how many people do you talk to throughout the year? Like, I know you've had many conversations with Drew about um, just hearing feedback and looking for how to um, adjust the conference to the market's changing needs. How many, how, how many conversations do you have? How many people do you talk with? And then I guess after that, what, what are you seeing in the overall um, uh, economy that's, that's driving, that makes you think this is the time for this change? Okay, that's, that's also a very good question. Um, yeah, um, basically, um, I see it like this. So, um, being the CEO of Namescon and with our team organizing that event, uh, we just don't want to do an event. We, we, see, we see a larger social responsibility as the largest um, uh, domain conference in the world to, to basically drive specific themes and to widen or widening our market yeah so we see we see a responsibility here not only to run an event you know which everyone likes but uh that people take something home and that there's actionable items over the year uh and um i would say in preparation for for this event like over the 12 months before I, I try to talk regularly to about 20 to 30 people, you know, which I would call as my inner circle of um, how I gather information and, and like people I regularly talk to, to to get different perspectives, you know, from, let's say, true is one of them, you know, but obviously there's, there's others, you know, so I, I try to, to have a complete... What, you're cheating on me? ...covered, yeah, <laughs> from... <laughs> From the guys from the backend providers to the registries to the registrars, a different kind of domain investors, um, the guys who are basically providing solutions for the domain industry, the traffic guys, um, the business intelligent guys. So um, I would say the inner circle is like 20 to 30 people, um, which I regularly talk to. Um, and to answer the second part of the question, what is thriving right now? Um, I think um, I have a feeling that uh, it's picking up uh, again automatically compared to the last two, three years. We, we, we see definitely some growth again in, in the secondary domain market. We see prices going up slightly. Um, we see that some players are actually helping the whole industry to, um, to become better, like GoDaddy being very aggressive very good in marketing, um, helping people to understand basically the value of domain names. And um, I mean, in general, it's becoming, it, it's, it's becoming a little better to, let's say two, three years ago. And um, I mean, it's, it's a combination of things which, which definitely is driving that, but we, we see it picking up for now. What is your opinion, true about it? Yeah, I mean, um... You know, I think I think that uh, in general, one of the big problems that we have is an industry that we sort of talk about ourselves as one complete package. And you know, um, I would say like the domain aftermarket. Uh, well, hold on, the wholesale aftermarket. So the domain investors trading with other domain investors or trading with you know industry companies, um, not the end user market. Uh, but but the, the, the wholesale aftermarket is about as bad as I've ever seen it. It's, it's, there's very little liquidity. Uh, the only liquidity you find really is in the expired auction marketplace on GoDaddy, which is booming, right? The prices are basically, uh, sell, you know, domain, good domain sell for end user prices in the expired auctions on GoDaddy now. Uh, most domain investors are priced out of the market to get good names. Uh, when, when they drop on, uh, on GoDaddy. Um, but if you are on some of these other, uh, you know, outlets, auctions, 
forums. Uh, it's dead. I mean, it's just it's people talking amongst themselves. There's no transactions happening. Uh, if you need fast liquidity, there's very little out there. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's it's pretty ugly. I mean, I have people coming to me daily that are complaining. Uh, you have people who are leaving the industry who have been you know in it for for years. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's just it's not good, not good. Uh, but the, those people represent, you know, probably the lower, let's say, 95% of the market. They're, they're trading in smaller names. They're maybe investing in, you know, names that aren't very liquid. Um, and what I find so interesting is that on the flip side, on the whole, on the, on the end user aftermarket, it's booming. I, I mean, we've been, uh, yeah. media options is, you know, 12 years going on, 13 years now and um no sorry 12 it'll be yeah 12 years this month i think 12 yeah 12 years 12 years this month and um uh you know this is the busiest we've ever been i mean and uh, domain sales you know again we're focused really on the top two percent of domains but those domains are selling for higher prices than they've ever sold sold for before um you know we just sold a, a four letter dot com domain that we own that we've been negotiating with the same company for three years. Now you can easily say, well, okay, the company grew up to a, a level where they could afford to buy the domain. Uh, in this particular case, that's, that's, I mean, of course they've grown over those years or they wouldn't be here, but uh, they could easily have afforded to buy this domain three years ago when we first, when they first engaged with us. Uh, and I think what has changed is the perceived value and the, known scarcity of hey i better take this name off the market because otherwise it's going to go to somebody else and they'll be off the market forever yeah. and um so I, I find it so interesting that there's this dichotomy of this you know one of the worst investor wholesale markets i've ever seen and one of the best end user aftermarkets i've ever seen and so where's the discrepancy why is that happening and, mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I have some, some, some guesses as to why that's happening, um, which again, I think is great, you know, we'll discuss it in name time. Uh, but uh, it's just an observation that I think is really important to point out because it's a, it's a very strange scenario that you would have more end user sales at higher levels than ever before. And at the same time, domain investors struggling uh to make sales make any sales and i think that uh i think that the conversation there again should be focused on helping domain investors understand what domains have value what domains represent investment quality domain names um you know maybe we should scrap some of these words around premium domains blah, blah, blah. like we have domains which are investment grade right and investment grade stocks are you know stocks which have companies that are profitable or a path to profitability you know they, they, they meet certain qualifications they're of a certain size right if you're in if you're hand registering domains those are not investment grade domains by definition because if they were it already be registered so uh we're, we're just at that point of maturity in the market right so i i think you know there just needs to be a little bit more um sort of hard talk you know, uh, good, direct learning and education and actionable talking points, you know? Um, so uh, what I'm really hearing, you know, from my 14 years in the industry is this change from, because before pretty much anybody could show up, figure something out and make a profit. And we're having a change where domain investment is basically getting harder, but there's even more opportunity for profit at, at, at the ultimate exit. Um, and I think too, probably Soren, you would agree that we're seeing a higher quality of domain right. investor coming in. And we also have a lot of qualified investors who've been dabbling for years and years, but basically it's like, ah, eh, I'll get around to it. I'll just pick up another name, but I'm not going to 
evolve my game to the next level because there's no pressure. There mm. are, I, oh, sorry, I muted your saw. What were you going to say? Uh, sorry. Uh, no, I think you, you, you made a really, that's a really good point. So, um, you know, in terms of like what's changing and how do we change that narrative and what, what, what can we do that's actionable? It's like, you know, let's talk about some of the tools that are either coming or should somebody should build that would solve some of these problems. Let's talk about these new mechanisms by which we can all start promoting our domains. Um, let's talk about new ways to structure deals that will uh, create liquidity where it didn't previously exist, where it will, you know, we can grab some of that, you know, inefficiency. So when I say inefficiency, it's like, all right, you've got a domain and you want $100,000. Here's a startup and they don't have $100,000, but they would be an ideal candidate for your domain. You've been sitting on this domain for 10 years. It hasn't sold. So what's your opportunity cost by sitting on it for another 10 years versus saying, okay, let me give you this domain for 10 grand, which will buy you a hundred thousand dollar option to buy this domain for a hundred grand at any time in the next five years. And you can start leasing it for 1% of the purchase price per month. So a thousand dollars a month, you know, less than your hosting cost, probably less than your, you know, the guy that keeps your, or your woman that keeps your floors clean. Like, you know, is keeping your floor clean more important than your global digital brand? Probably not. And if it is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, maybe you need to rethink your business. So, uh, who, what, you know, in what world does a sm intelligent startup founder not take that deal? Like, oh, I can brand on my perfect dot-com brand on day one, which is going to help me with fundraising, which is going to help me with, uh, you know, uh, re retaining employees and hiring, which is going to help me maybe with a co-founder if I need to, which is going to help me, you know, just with my marketing, my trust, my conversion rates, my cost of customer acquisition, right? Like, so all of those things I just mentioned are, it's a pool of, of efficiency and efficiency is money. So there's this whole pool of money that we as a domain industry aren't touching. You know, we're touching maybe one and a half to $3 billion a year uh, as an, you know, an aftermarket, uh, the domain aftermarket. I think that we should be touching around 10 to 15, maybe even $20 billion a year. Uh, and I think we could do that in the next three to five years if we solve some of these problems. I agree. And it's grabbing that freaking, you know, grab some of that, you know, inefficiency. It's yeah. like, don't, now, you know, it's like, you know, right now what's happening is that scenario I just laid out, it's, you know, some domain investor goes, mm, you don't want to pay $100,000? Okay. And he sits on his hands. And then he yeah. sits on that domain for the next 10 years. And that pool of, liquidity that we just talked about goes somewhere else, right? It goes to hiring more employees. It goes to marketing. It goes to whatever else. And maybe, or maybe not, they ever come and show up and buy your domain. Yeah. But so look, we as an industry need yeah. to go out and grab that by mm -hmm. solving problems for mm -hmm. these people, solve problems for the people that want our domains, create efficiency for them, which provides value to us. If you provide value to them, Money chases value. So mm -hmm. if we can provide value to them by solving these inefficiencies, we will earn money. We being, you know, domain investors, uh, marketplaces, brokers, anybody who is, you know, on the transactional side of the domain industry. Yeah, but look, uh, for, for I, I see it exactly the same way. Um, and, and to maybe answer also the second part of uh, test test question, um, I was thinking, what can we do as, as Namescon to, to basically on this top of the market, on the premium side, which seems to be really picking up and working well, you know, let's concentrate on that part, you know. So, so we were thinking, what can we do from our side to, to enable that, you know, to bring more speed into it, to, to go into the second or third gear for now, you know. And um, so, I mean, at the end, it's all about the buyer, right? We're all interested in the buyer, yeah, in, in the premium quality buyer. So um, there's like three audiences which we can concentrate on as an organizer. It's the startups, yeah, itself. Mm -hmm. So this is a try, you know. We're doing it um, in this Omni Hotel and adjusting to this Omni Hotel in the same building is this um, 
social factory in Austin, which hosts more than a thousand startups. So mm -hmm. we will do some program for those who are interested to learn more about the domain industry. It's a try, you know, we, we will totally. try it out um, to see, but it's like one audience, you know, which we are concentrating on. The second audience, um, which we are seeing more and more coming to Namescon, specifically over the last three years since I, I'm able to observe it, it's um, to get more and more of the domain portfolio managers of Fortune mm -hmm. 1000 companies. You know, totally. so um, let it be like three years ago when I first went through the attendee list, it was five or six of them, you know. The year after, it's 10. It's still a very small number, you know, but we yeah. see more more of those coming and also in our marketing and outreach we are concentrating more to get this this specific person you know it's it's usually a one-man show in the IT department you know which is in charge for 10 or 20 thousand domains and third uh, uh, and um, also very important are the brand agencies obviously yeah as a, mm -hmm. as a third target group so for us it's like what can we do to um, to concentrate on this top segment, you know, and it's basically for us, it's inviting these type of attendees, concentrating to get this type of new, fresh blood into the industry and, and matchmake, obviously, <clears throat> mm -hmm. with, with the domain investors. So mm -hmm. that is what we're concentrating on. And the other part is to put more transparency into that. Um, it's a very small industry. We all agree on that, you know, and if you look at let's say the public listed companies in our field, either public listed or private, private equity owned, there's not so many, you know, <laughs> there's, there's just like three or four analysts in the whole world um, who are basically covering companies within our ecosystem, which are public listed. You know, there's, there's maybe true. more covering very sign and GoDaddy, but just the two of them, the big ones, you know, yeah. but there's only three or four which are covering the smaller ones, you know, let's say yeah. the public listed ones like Two Cows or MMX or mm -hmm. uh, Central Nick and so on. So mm -hmm. um, that is also something which, which we like to draw, you know, I mean, there, there should be much more coverage coming from, totally. from Betsy as well, you know, in order to, to uh, widen um, our market, you know, so that is, that is another draw which, which we are currently doing, you know, to identify this, these people and, and getting them over to our conference. And um, yeah, that is something we believe which needs to be done, you know, that we need to be more talk about it. So let's get the people here, you know, who talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, great point, great point. And, and I think um, right along with that, one of the other big sort of hurdles that I think we have to address is just breaking down that, that, that friction between the domain industry and everybody else, right? Like there's this inherent and implied and perceived friction of good, bad, good, bad. You know, it's just, it, it, like we need to get past that. Uh, you know, there's no, when, when, when a company, a startup is looking for a headquarters or, you know, if you want to use the real estate analogy or, or if they're, you know, any other product or any other service, it's not a, it's not a, you know, a, a, a uh, what, what's the word, um, uh, adversarial relationship. It's a, mm -hmm. you know, it's a partnership. Uh, mm -hmm. We're trying to add value to you. You're trying to add value to us. You know, it, 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 it's, I, I don't know why that friction needs to persist. I understand why it's there because in the early days of, you know, trademark infringement and, you know, the wild west, it, it, you know, we, we did it to ourselves. You know, we shot ourselves in the foot. Yes. Uh, and, and hopefully we're far, far enough past that now. Um, you know, it's not perfect, that's for sure. And there's still problems that persist. But hopefully we're far enough past that now that let's figure out how to eliminate that friction. Let's change the perception. And so mm -hmm. uh, I think that's also a role that you guys can, can help play. I think the complete answer to that problem is education and communication especially connecting like in person at namescon um i think that education you know i think the reason that a lot of the friction continues no matter what created it in the beginning people walk in with their misconceptions basically on the brand end they think domainers are 
jerks with astronomical prices for no reason. And so they need to be educated on how to value a domain, what's behind that. And I think on the domainer end, um, there are a lot of domainers who don't understand that they are um, not only devaluing their own domains, but any domains when, you know, some poor corporate brand manager or portfolio manager is receiving, you know, a thousand unsolicited emails a day about why they should buy this trademark infringing or otherwise just stupid um, domain name. So um, for domain investors to learn how to speak to them, who to speak to them through, what they're looking for in value um, beyond just, well, obviously this is an awesome domain. Um, and I think that you're really addressing both of those problems, Soren. And um, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I feel like 2020 is like definitively the, um, isn't that the year that um, cars start to fly? <laughs> like, don't you remember when you were a kid? Like it was 20, like didn't all the movies of the future, it wasn't everything in 2020. Um, so it seems very fitting to me that we're going to start the year off with what I really am hearing is a big shift because of a lot of opportunity. And Drew, you know, I hate math, but you're saying maximum right now at three, three billion. And you think in the next three years, we're going to be looking at 20 billion. That means we're at maximum. We're at 15% of where we could be or should be or will be in the next three years. Well, uh, well I think... Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I, obviously that's a pretty uh, ambitious uh, prediction. But the reason that I say that with some degree of confidence is that you have some really big macro uh, trends and, and factors that are dovetailing. And, you know, the emergence of crypto and people's sort of understanding and acceptance of digital assets, uh, the fractional economy. Uh, where people can fractionally invest into assets, people can fractionally participate in the use of an asset. Uh, these are all concepts that if you went back five years, they didn't exist. People didn't, you know, this was not something that you could even talk about in the mainstream. And now it's household conversation. Um, you've got uh, this massive shift of, you know, which is just, you know, now it's just accelerating uh, exponentially where of, you know, a shift from uh, retail commerce happening at the brick and mortar street level, moving all to digital, right? And uh, you look at like real estate investment trusts, again, coming back to that real estate analogy, uh, retail driven real estate investment trusts, which are just, you know, publicly traded funds that own large amounts of, of, of physical retail, uh, 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 real estate, sorry. Uh, many of them, and particularly the early ones, were very focused on commercial uh, retail. Uh, real estate, particularly malls, shopping centers, strip malls, etc., and those REITs um, are hemorrhaging value. Value because uh, more and more of the, that retail space is sitting empty with a, for a lease or for a sale sign on it, and uh, that trend is is growing very quickly. And uh, as uh, Mr. Einstein said, E equals M C squared. Energy is a constant. You can't. Energy and, 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 and everything is energy. So it's ultimately, it's like the value of commerce isn't, is, it's not shrinking. Okay, the value of commerce is either staying neutral or maybe we've got some slow global growth. Um, but the only place it's growing is in the digital economy. And all of that value that's shifting from the, the retail brick and mortar economy is shifting to the digital economy. And domain names are the underlying asset of the digital economy. Um, you know, just, I'm sorry, it's just, that's a fact. I don't, I don't you know, I, I, there's a lot of people who try to dispute it, but it, it's a simple fact. Um, uh, the land, you know, underneath Manhattan is the underlying asset of the Manhattan economy, uh, plain and simple. Without it, it doesn't exist. Um, so um, I think that for those reasons and a, and a whole slew of other ones, uh, you know, we're finally hitting that tipping point of where, like, I think it's in the next three years, we'll have doubled the number of people online from two years ago. Um, we'll triple the number of businesses online. 
And, you know, all of them, uh, or some percentage of them are competing for this digital real estate. And, you know, of course, yeah. the best is always going to, uh, or, you know, accelerate faster than the rest. I, I think, um, yeah, this is, again, another topic that uh, we can discuss. But there's a lot of things happening that people are probably aware of, but they're not putting the pieces together to understand how this is going to impact domain names. And it's almost every day now. I feel like I'm seeing some piece of news that's, you know, on the fringe that I say, oh, there's, you know, just another needle in the stack, right? Like, right. okay, another reason to support the, in, the growing value of domains. Um, you know, I, and I don't think there's any big change here. I think it's just, you know, the curve is accelerating. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And I think you made an amazing summary of the macroeconomics, which are basically helping to boost that, that whole industry right now. Yep. And it's kind of up to us what we do out of it, right? Exactly. So, exactly. It's a whole industry, right? So We can let it just run yeah. us over or mm -hmm. we can have this conversation and say, hey, okay, here's the opportunity. Mm -hmm. how, how do we get our arms around it? Right, yeah. That's I mean, the conversation the last, we need yeah. to have. The, the last couple of weeks, I got a little bit more into this fine violin industry. You know, my, my son plays very good violin, so he's at the uh -huh. age where his fingers are adult fingers now. So we, we went shopping, you know. So how, how old is he? 14, yeah. Okay. So, so basically, um, we went to this um, store here in London, which is, uh, supplying, which is the supplier for a royal family. So it's like a 250-year-old company or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and I, I was able to compare like some of the economics of, of like, let's say that fine violin collector market to the domain industry. Yeah. So look, I mean, it's very simple. There's like only 80 Stradivaris left in the world. So it's a yeah. very limited de de uh, supply, you know, which is available. Yeah. Yeah. There are more, you know, it's, it's like very, very limited, you know, and it's the same, let's say, with, you can compare it very well with two letter dot coms, you know, there's 580 combinations. There's not more, you know, that can't 676. Be okay, you're right. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, it's very, very limited, you know, so, um, and the same like in this violent business compared to, to our domain industry, there's some certain intransparency, you know, for collectors, yeah. Um, however, I mean, with this physical good, it has the advantage, you know, in the case of my son, um, it's basically someone super rich, you know, bought a violin which is 300 years old and, and basically gave it to my son to play it, you know. Um, so, you know, the owners of those violins doesn't necessarily, you know, need to play them or need to use them. They make yeah. them available to, to people, you know, who do it better or need it. Exactly. Yeah? And, exactly. and that, is, that is something, you know, which... Which it's I was a new concept to learn and, you know, from another asset class, you know, like comparing yeah. that to our domain industry. Yep. And that helped me also to get some ideas, which, which we were discussing in preparation, you know, for this, like, how, how do we make this asset class bigger? You know, you, you have this fractional ownership is, is one of them. But I think another big thing which we need to answer is like, look, we're all getting older, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. look at, look at me. Yeah. So, um, at, um, um, at one point, you know, we have to think what, what's happening to our domain portfolio, you know, if for the people who will inherit it, you know, that is something we, which was never discussed before at any of these domain conferences, but it's one of the topics which we, which we put high on the agenda, you know, and I think it will be interesting. very interesting, you know, for, for a lot I, of... I just, you know, without going too deep, I just met, I went, uh, last week I was invited by my law firm, uh, to uh, come to this uh, startup event. It was a startup pitch contest. Uh, the law firm has like a little incubator that they do. And um, uh, there was one company that I really love because it's, you know, it solves this problem that I, I've been thinking about a lot, which is exactly what you just talked about. But not just for domains, but also, you know, cryptocurrency for uh, passwords, for, you know, how do you manage that and, and pass it on and provide proper instruction, um, get the the right people involved uh, in, 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 you know, the handover, the management, et cetera, monetization. And these guys, uh, uh, inadvertently, they, you know, they weren't focused on domain names at all, but I think they actually solved it. The first solution I've ever found that 
solves the problem quite well. Um, and I, I, so I'm talking to these guys. I think I'm going to invest in them. But uh, maybe I should tell them to come to uh, Austin and, 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 you know, uh, talk about what they've done. Um, but yeah, you're right. That's, that's another, you know, buttoning up all those sort of ancillary things around the asset class that exist in other asset classes uh, is so critical to moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True, true. That's super interesting. So who, who's, your, who's your topic expert? Um, if you could say, I don't know if you could say or not, for that subject. Is, is it a lawyer or is there somebody trying to, is there somebody actually with a solution? I know Domain Guardians had sort of attempted it at some point, but uh, I know, I don't remember why, but they, they ran into a variety of problems and didn't mm. pursue it further. What do you mean by that, uh, true? <clears throat> uh, on the subject of, you know, um, passing along domain portfolios to the next generation and what will be done with it and um you know so drew are you thinking that soren is saying he's gonna have someone speak on that yeah well uh it said it was you know, you'd move that up to a quite high on the priority list of topics uh, mm -hmm. to discuss is, is there is there something scheduled on uh, that subject it's still filling okay still but filling. it's a super interesting topic it is. that's yes. a topic mm -hmm. and i would want to go watch that topic uh because it's yeah. you know it directly affects every single domain investor, you know, at the show. Yeah, uh, but it's actually a good reminder. We are just at the time where we are filling the agenda daily, you know. So yep. uh, for one who is watching this, this episode of Domain Shaper, it's the right time to get in touch with us right now for, for anyone yeah. who wants to participate. Yeah, I know. So Adam Strong and uh, Jen Sale, uh, uh, I think Mike Roberts, uh, when he was still involved with that group, uh, they had launched Domain Guardians at some point, and they were trying to solve for that problem. But I, they shut okay. it down, and it didn't, it didn't really get anywhere. Okay. Um, yeah. Would be Not for, I don't, to know what what roadblocks they hit, what needs to be overcome to yeah. you know, take it to the next level. Well, hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I do. I, I don't think they have really any ambitions of redoing it, but it could be interesting to have them on the panel yeah. just to mm -hmm. talk about what were some of the sure. hurdles they ran into so that somebody else can solve for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So Soren, are there any uh, speakers you can tell us about or you think we should just uh, keep our eyes out for, for further announcements? Yeah, let's, let's keep your eyes out for further announcement. It's just the time of filling while, while we talk here and record that, that episode uh, that will look a little different, uh, a little further down into December in two or three weeks. So um, we, we are filling it in the background be, before we will publish the, the next set. So um, I think it's good if we touch base again in two, three weeks from now. That Perfect. sounds really exciting. And just real, what to, you know, real quick, what, talk about the auction. I mean, you know, I, my favorite yeah. part of the names con is always oh, yeah. the auction. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what uh, you know, you've got GoDaddy now hosting the auction. Uh, but I assume the format of the live auction will some more or less be the same. Are we still going to have Wayne, uh, Monty's running the auction? What, give, give us some insights into the auction. Yes. So, um, I mean, what you saw last week is basically the announcement that we changed the backend provider to GoDaddy, which I see as a huge advantage because it, it will help the overall indus industry with their marketing power, you know, to promote yeah. domains and, and this idea of this live auction much more yeah. than we ever had before. Yeah. So totally. this is like a very, very good point, especially on the, the marketing side, you know, that, yeah. that backend is now um, based on, on GoDaddy. So Monte and the GoDaddy team are working very hard right now to, to basically add this live auction functionality to the GoDaddy platform. Yeah, so that is, that is working great. And um, yeah, I mean, we just opened the submissions, you know, it's submission time, you know, you can go yeah, to yeah. namescon.global. I think we have a blog entry there on the, um, uh, about the auction with a link, you know, to a submission page. So mm -hmm. it's the time right now to submit domains. And Monte and the GoDaddy team, is already busy looking into everything what is coming in. Um, I mean, 
Beside of that, Wayne will be there. Yeah, I mean, he's great, you know, and it's, it's yeah. actually his hometown, you know, where, where this takes place. So he will be extra motivated. Uh, this awesome. And, and less jet lag. Yes, and less jet lag, that's true. And um, I mean, from the format, it will be the same, you know, there will be three, four, five hundred domains in the auction, including the extended auctions and so on. And, and live, we will have our 120, 130. Yeah domains which are going over the table and uh, what is also important is I think the, the whole scenery will be not much nicer than in the Tropicana in Las Vegas so <laughs> uh, we hope that will will also animate uh, to uh, to get higher and bigger results um, but in general I mean I see that as we over the next years, I see that as a major point um, how we can grow Namescon as an event. Uh, putting more and more focus on it and now having the right backend provider in place, having also the marketing power to to go to new steps, you know, which we can reach uh, in the auction results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's super fabulous that uh, GoDaddy's doing that part of it and that Wayne is still on board. I love love the combination. Good of, combination. Um, yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they, 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 it's a game changer to have the reach of GoDaddy to be able to, you know, I, I hope that they use that reach uh, to promote the auction and to, uh, you know, sort of bring awareness, uh, not just the auction, but also the conference. Correct. Uh, because there are so many startups in Austin, uh, you know, it would just be well, this such is a, a great opportunity to sort of draw them in, mm -hmm. uh, you know. I don't know. I don't know what kind of outreach you are doing or have done or plan to do, but you know, even just to invite them, you know, it's like, how do you get somebody interested in you know car racing? Well, you know, you don't. They don't get excited watching it on TV. They they get excited by going to a race, hearing right. the engines roar, and you know, seeing this car black fire them in you know the, the blink of an eye. Um, I you know, I would think. And obviously, I've got a biased opinion here, but I would think that this would be something that a lot of startups who are local, if, you, if they're available, you know, allow them, uh, allow them to come to the auction component Correct. of the yeah. uh, of the show for free. Like, you know, you, yeah. you guys earn on the commissions. Um, you know, it's good for everybody. But like, make it an open invitation for anybody who wants to come uh, to the. Uh, you know, you don't have to necessarily put it up on the website, but maybe you do a targeted marketing approach, you know, reach out to South by Southwest or reach out to, you know, some of the local startup incubators and say, Hey, mm -hmm. any of your members, any of your participants, okay, you know, whatever, uh, are, are welcome to come to the auction. Uh, you know, the, the, you, you can buy a ticket for the show or you can just attend the live auction event. Uh, and uh, I just, I wish I had it. I'll, I'll look for it. And if I, if I find it, I'll send it to you. But I just read this mm -hmm. amazing article. I don't know if it was in Vanity Fair, but it was about um, how uh, live auctions are making this massive comeback where they had sort of been sort of yeah. dying off and people preferred anonymity. And, you know, it's becoming sort of the, a new way of showing social status, you know, a new way of, you know, sort of community. And, um, there was all these elements that I, you know, never had clicked for me, but it was, it was a really interesting article. Um, uh, you know, it, it was about a watch auction and a car auction. And it mm -hmm. was about, you know, how the topic of the auction became actually less, basically what they figured out is that the less they pushed it as, you know, a commercial auction and the more yeah. they made it about, you know, bring together interesting people to be in a room for an event, and oh, by the way, you can buy some of the best watches in the world, the most exclusive and rare cars. Uh, you know, it's like you bring together your proper audience in a room and you yeah. say, oh, hey, by the way, we're selling some really cool things that I know you guys are interested in. Uh, it works. It just works. It, 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 it creates a magic that works. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had their highest sell through rate. I think it was a record setting auction. You know, it was, it was, I just, what I remember from my takeaway was that it was done in a sort of new format. It was a little bit of a risk and it worked. And they talked about some of the reasons why it worked. And yeah. uh, I think that, you know, getting those people, I mean, 
get the local VCs, get the local startups, get the founders, get the guys who are, you know, the exited, you know, if you can somehow reach those folks and say, Hey, we're going to host a live domain auction, uh, free booze, show up, get a paddle, bid for yeah. a domain, right? Yeah. Uh, Correct. I, I think they'll do it. I think people are just enough intrigued by the domain industry that they're like, Oh, wow. And you yeah. know what? Those people will probably buy a ticket and come to the whole conference next year. Right. Uh, it is going to be a year over year build. But Drew, when you say an auction, there's the roar of an engine and the burst of a car passing you. Somehow I feel like you are describing yourself. <laughs> Both of uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I became I obsessed with Formula loved... One after I went to my first Formula One race in Montreal. I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest sport ever. <laughs> uh, and then now they have quiet motors and I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always loved the auction, but... Um, but my favorite part about it is seeing you. Um, Soren, speaking of Montreal, any key takeaways or things you want to share before we wrap up about uh, the ICANN conference in Montreal a couple of weeks ago? Oh, wow. For us, it was a super busy time, like catching up with um, sponsors and potential sponsors. So it was basically running from meeting after meeting and having a couple of um, evening social events um, to participate in. To be honest, like I didn't get much, you know, it's because we were just concentrated so much on us, you know, talking to the, to the stakeholders and, and also getting feedback on our ideas from various parties, you know, our sponsors and partners in the ecosystem. Um, so for me, it was just three days flying by extremely fast, to be honest. Fair enough. That's okay. All right. Well, I think we'll probably say the same about uh, NamesCon in uh, a couple weeks, really. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Yeah, thank yeah. you for taking the time to tell us what's new and different. Drew, thanks for jumping in and being our loud race car. And um, get, get, your, get your workouts going for your paddle holding. It's coming soon. Yeah. Say, uh, say hello to Bobbin and uh, thank you for thank you. use your... Don't say hello to him, kidnap him and bring him. Um, he was, I think, the most talked about keynote I have ever um, heard after a Dimean conference. Uh, bring him back, bring him back. Let's okay. do that. All right. I will talk to him about it now. Thank you. Okay, cheers. Thank you, bye-bye.